Okay, so today I'm gonna teach you how to make this slice transition or what I like to call the K-slice because it's a knife and you, you slice and it's a slice trend. K slice! But you're not just gonna learn how to make the nodes, you're also going to learn how to make this a macro. If you don't know what that is, it's basically just like a plugin. It's a way to save this as a single node so that way you can reuse it and you don't have to watch this video again. Intro, intro. Now before we get started, you probably want to slow down the knife animation just because they're really fast. So, you can either make a fusion clip by right clicking, uh, new fusion clip, or you can go into your effects and then drop in an adjustment clip. That's, it's kind of up to you. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is hold down alt and click on our pipeline so we get this pipe router. Now this is really just used for organization and macros next thing you need to do is uh add in a mat control so we're gonna add in one two mat controls and then we're gonna take the output of this pipe router and connect it to the gold arrows gold arrows also we don't need uh this connected right now anyways i got sidetracked what do the mat controls do well if i drop in an ellipse node and connect it to the garbage mat hey it cuts out this area. It's very similar to plugging it into the blue arrow of your media node, but we can use one media node and get two videos. So the mat controls are gonna be used to create the masks needed for this transition. I'm just gonna drop in a polygon node, connect it here, and then I'm gonna just you know, make a quick outline for you guys. You, you take more time than this. But if I copy this polygon node and connect it to the other mat control, um, we get two of the same looking images and that's kind of a problem. However, what you could do is invert the polygon mask. Hey, it's future me. Um, I forgot to mention that you don't need to invert this polygon mask every single time. You can make it permanently inverted by going into your mat control and then go to garbage mat and just check the invert box. This way, when you make the macro, all you have to do is copy that polygon node and you can paste it right here. And now you can separate them without having to invert anything. It's just one less step that you have to do. Anyways, back to the video. And now it's filling up this space. So if I do something like this, where I drop in a merge node um, and I bring this into the second viewer window, you can see we have a, a full video instead of like these, these two halves of a video. Okay, we don't need this merge node right now. We're gonna grab that later on. After the mat control, we're gonna add a transform node. And this is how we can move the masks. If I want to move this, we can use the transform. So we're gonna add another transform after our second mat control, except we want it to be linked to that first transform. That way we don't have to mess with a bunch of settings. So what we're gonna do is copy this transform and paste, but paste as an instance. Any value we change in transform one automatically gets changed in the instance. So let's just connect this mat control to the instance. We have transform one in the first window. So instance transform will bring it to the second window. And look at this. Anything that I do here gets applied here. Or anything I do here gets applied here. There's just one problem here. Our pieces are moving together and we want them to move away from each other. So if I connect a merge node and move the transform around, it just moves as one image. And this is basically just one complicated <laughs> transform node. So we got to fix that. And this is when things can get kind of confusing. So pay attention. Um, The first thing we're going to do is in this transform node in our inspector, we're going to hit the pin button. And then in the instance, we're also going to hit the pin button. And as you can see, we can see both of the settings at the same time. Now with the instance transform, we want to de-instance the center. So you're going to right click the center and then um, de-instance it. Now I can freely move it around and um, it doesn't follow the other center thingy my bob. Let me just reset these real quick. The next thing we need to do is add a modifier to both of these centers. So we're going to right click, modify with, and we're going to choose offset position. Make sure you do that to the other transform, modify with, offset position. Now, if we look at the very top of our inspector, you'll see modifiers is now highlighted. Let's 
click that. Hey, hey, there's the modifiers. We gotta pin these as well, and then we double click to open it. There we go. Now these controls are very similar to the regular ones, except we also have offset. If I zoom out here, you can see that the offset is pushing this 0.1 off from the X and the Y. So let's change the position to 0.5 and the offset to zero for both modifiers. The next thing is to link the offsets with each other. So you only have to move one to move both of them. To do that, I'm going to right click the offset, go down to expression. And then here we have this plus, I'm gonna take it, drag it and connect it to this offset. Now, if I move transform one offset, Hey, look, it's moving both images at the same time. But now we're back to square one. So we have to modify this expression and it's really simple. Right before offset to offset, you're gonna add a minus, that, that's it. So because our default value is at zero, the negative is the exact opposite. Therefore, it moves in the opposite direction. Okay, so now what you can do is add a merge if you haven't yet and just mess around with these settings real quick, you see? I'm not lying, like you can separate the videos with just one control. You can also move one video with two controls. Wow. Now you could just leave the no tree like this if you want, but there's a million other settings that we have access to that we don't need. And it, it also just kind of takes up a lot of space. Like there's just, there's no sense in, in having it like this. That's why we're gonna create a macro. All you have to do is highlight your node tree, make sure you don't highlight the polygons, the media, and the media out. <laughs> oh my God, what? <laughs> mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two. I think, my, I think my mic's dying. You got everything highlighted. You're gonna right click one of them, go to macro, create macro. Now this looks like a whole lot of anxiety and it's, it's really not. It's just the nodes with all of their settings and we only need a, a couple of them from each node. You also notice that some of these are highlighted red and some of them aren't. That's because the red ones, they have stuff check marked like this and the ones not highlighted, well, they, they don't have anything checked. All right, in your mat control, you need the garbage mat. The next node is the pipe router. We absolutely need that. It's our input. Uh, transform one, we don't need the center, but we do need the pivot, the size, angle. And I mean, you can add the other stuff if you want, but realistically, these are the only three controls you need out of it. The next thing is our offset. Now it, it could be confusing because we have offset one here, but then we have transform one there. The offset is the modifier and it's right below transform one, which means this is the modifier for this transform. So what we need out of this is just the position and offset. I don't know why, but it always adds the angle and distance by default. So uncheck those checked offset uh, uh, position and offset also you might want to rename these the position acts just like the center in your transform so i'm going to relabel this to center one because we're going to have two of these settings next up we have mat control number two we just need the garbage mat out of this instance transform you don't need to change anything with that offset number one again uncheck angle and distance uh position and off Oh no, we don't want offset. We just want position because remember this offset is linked to this offset. So if you change this, it changes that. We don't need to control this. So I'm just gonna relabel position to center two. The last node is our merge and that's just gonna act as the output. Now relabel this, K slice. And then file, save as. I already have a K slice, so I'm not gonna save it. Now, if you did everything right, that means when you hit shift space, you can type in K-slice, I already typed it in, I guess. And, and there it is. Oh, don't wanna add it in right now. And we can't see any of the controls because we're on modifier still. So I'm gonna just uncheck these, take that, uh, uncheck this and unpin this, uh, click off and then click back on. There you go, we have all, all the controls are right here. So what you can do is just delete all of this mess. We, we don't need it anymore. We, we got everything packed into one little neat node. We connect this. The gold arrow, that there, okay? Just acts like a, a normal, normal thing. But we have these garbage masks, so we can connect polygon nodes to them and we can make a, a thing like that. And then that, and then we can copy this, copy, paste, 
Put that. Now when you change the offset, it splits it in half. So the only thing left to do is just keyframing. Like you can take the polygon nodes and then like animate the mask. You can keyframe the offset so that way the video splits apart. You know, make this yours. And then finally add some glow. Oh. <laughs> that was smooth, baby. That's how you make the case slice transition as a macro. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or join the Discord. That's the end of the video. Goodbye.